guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I am here at a particular filming spot location that I hand picked because of this new performance Mustang from Ford. What is it? It's the 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse. But before we get into this rear wheel drive, big V8 powered equipped performance car, let's talk about what's going on here, the Mustang. It was the first, it was the first pony car to come out onto the scene in 1965, technically 1964 and a half, if you are a Mustang aficionado. 67 would see the Camaro and the Firebird, and then 1970, you would get the Challenger. Now, fast forward to model year 2024, Challenger is dead, Camaro, this is the final year. So what is competition for this Mustang Dark Horse if everything is disappearing? A lot of people, especially car and driver, when this Mustang was new back in 2015, the S550 Mustang, they called it a cheaper, more value priced version of a BMW M4. Now we have the new S650 platform and an all new performance trim known as the Dark Horse. So is this really a valid competitor to the M4, and if you had the earning, if you had the yearning for a new performance vehicle, do you need to go spend the money on an M4? Or are you better off going with the Mustang Dark Horse? So let's go ahead, let's dive into this new 2024 Mustang from Ford and see, is it the better performance car than an M4 from BMW? Let's go ahead and find out. Right off the bat, the color, this is called Blue Ember, and it really fits the style of this new Mustang. Nice metal flake, depending on where you look at it, how much sun there is, and how much food you had to eat for the day, it's actually gonna change color, which is kind of really cool. and reminds me of the older Mystique color from the SN95 Mustang. Now at the front of the business, you're gonna get full LED lighting. This is what comes standard all the way around, headlights, daytime running lamps, and turn signals, on a BMW M4, you can opt for those optional laser lights, but this, you don't have an option like that. And to be honest with you, the laser lights are good. LED lights, especially the way they design these, work fantastic at night. You are gonna get some gunmetal gray finish, so I'm glad they didn't do a ton of gloss black. Gloss black only on the lower corner vents, which are functional on both sides. Now, you do get a little bit of a splitter, and that happens to be flat black, Comparing this to the BMW M4, it's got a lot more gloss black on the front, a lot more. And then the bigger difference is gonna be the grill. So as we come across the front, I really like the way they evolved the grill on the Dark Horse. We have our gunmetal gray Mustang badge there, gloss black, fully functional, same thing on the bottom portion, but I love the way they did the two nostrils on both sides, because remember we have dual throttle bodies on this V8 equipped Mustang Dark Horse. Now, if you compare this to a BMW M4, you're gonna get those ginormous nostrils, almost like a pig snout. A lot of people have moved on from it. I have said my piece. I still think, like I said, this is definitely the more attractive front end comparing the two. Let me know in the comment section how you feel about it. Now, as you rise up, you're gonna have that massive gloss black heat extractor taking that hot air out from underneath the hood. This Dark Horse has the optional vinyl graphics. You got the flat black, some satin black, and some gunmetal gray with the Dark Horse name. Nice touch, and you get a bulge. So you're getting that bulge. You don't have to be like an M4 owner that has to take the socks and put them down their pants. This, you have the real deal bulge. Now, when we come around the bend, what are we working with wheel and tire setup? So you're gonna notice standard wheels on this dark horse. This is the standard wheel, a good looking wheel. V spoke all the way around, 19 inch wheel. Look at those blueberry Brembo calipers, nice six piston calipers, 15 and a half inch rotors up front. Gonna give you ultimate in braking capability. And remember there is an optional handling package which gets you stickier tires, wider wheels, forged wheels which are lighter all the way around. So they're wider and they're lighter and I kind of like the style of the larger wheel. And it's large this way, 
not diameter. So 19 inch wheel all the way around, 255 on the width of the tire up front. So a little skinnier tire up front, fatter tire out rear. And I'm comparing this to the regular M4, not the M4 competition. Coming down the side, you do have your dark horse badge, no fake vents or anything like that. That's something on an M4. I don't like the way they do the fake vent on the side. Gunmetal gray finish on the mirror caps. I like the way they have a nice cohesive design going on. This one has the optional black painted roof. Really like the way they did that, especially on this one with the vinyl graphics. And then from the side of the vehicle, you could see the traditional Mustang lines to it. I'm glad they didn't go too far. It wasn't like going from Fox Body Mustang to SN95 Mustang from 93 to 94. It's not that big of a change. I like the way the evolution. Now at the tail end of the business, you're gonna get wider wheels on this dark horse. Even the standard wheel is wider than up front because we have on the back 275s. So more rubber to meet the road because this is rear wheel drive. You got those real deal Brembos, all four corners. And then you have a limited slip diff and 373 gears out back. You can get this with a 10 speed automatic or of course the six speed manual. Now, as we swing it around the back, gunmetal gray finish on your rear wing. I like the way they style the wing. A little bit of gloss black accents in the way that they support it. And then you have your tri bar, that classic tail light section, all LED lighting, all painted now in the center with your dark horse badge. And then working our way all the way down, you're gonna get that nice diffuser area, massive quad tip exhaust. We got a diff cooler, engine oil cooler, larger radiator. These are things that they beef up for the track use. But while we go ahead, these exhaust tips look good but I wanna see what makes the sound. Let's pop the hood on this dark horse and check out its heart. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hood struts underneath the hood, that Coyote V8 engine now featuring dual throttle bodies, dual intakes, and dual air boxes. You have that massive beefy strut tower brace and look at the way that it ties in the firewall on both sides. You got your intake plenum, tasteful engine cover, but what is going on when those cylinders are firing off. We have a five liter V8 producing 500 horsepower, 418 pound feet of torque, and we have the Tremec six speed manual transmission. Zero to 60, if you know how to dance on your tippy toes, 3.9 seconds, quarter mile goes by at 12.5 seconds at 115 miles per hour. Top speed is 168 miles per hour. And the Mustang Dark Horse weighs 3,975 pounds, MPGs, 14 in the city, 22 on the highway. Now remember, the BMW M4 has an inline six, an inline six, straight six, three liter, producing a little bit more than 470 horsepower, and you could get it mated to a six-speed manual or a ZF eight-speed automatic. But while we go ahead, let's fire up this horse and hear what it sounds like. <laughs> guys we are inside this 2024 mustang dark horse now i know you're saying to yourself well joe i've been looking for a new performance car uh, i've always had bmws but you know what i've always had bmw electrical issues as well i've kind of wanted to get a mustang before the v8 is gone how much is this so this dark horse the way that it's optioned is right around sixty three thousand dollars if you go for the handling package that's gonna bump it up closer to $68,000, but still a far cry from the price of a BMW M4, which is around $90,000, if you could believe that. But let's see what the new Mustang Dark Horse brings to the door panels. I like the style. Clean evolution of the previous gen, Alcantara on the Dark Horse, nice blue leather on the Dark Horse trim as well. You do have that 
carbon fiber style design that's actually part of the material, laser etched in there. Door pocket is a good enough size for a big old Whopper, large fry, and a can of Pepsi to wash it down. Going from the door panel to the dash, same thing. We got that carbon fiber style. I actually like it because it's not like they stuck something over. This is actually the material all of itself instead of there being more pieces. You have the dark horse badge with your chassis number. That blue ember stitching looks really good. And then on the interior, this is where you have your all new 13.9 inch infotainment system. Not my favorite style, but I actually like it better than what's in the M4, to be honest with you. Sync 4 software. And my favorite part is when you hit the home button, you hit features, and then you hit my Mustang. This is where you could make all those changes. There's track apps. You got every color of the rainbow, plus some with ambient lighting. And then you even have the difference in cluster themes that you could change. I've been keeping on track. I really like the way that that one is set up. Throw it into reverse. Pretty good on the resolution. It could be a little clear, but I like how nice and large it is. The one thing I have to zonk is all the controls are in the system on the screen. So AC, you got to touch. Heated and ventilated seats, you got to touch. But you do have heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, and dual climate control, which is nice. Like the way they styled the AC vents, start stop button. You got your pony button. When you hit that, it immediately brings you to my Mustang, which is nice. And a real deal volume knob. So they took care of you there. You can see the stitching on the side, 12 volt. Highly recommend a radar detector. Keep yourself out of trouble. USB-C, USB-A, wireless charging, and a place for some Slim Jims. Snap into a Slim Jim, oh yeah. Titanium shift knob on that Tremec six-speed manual, and this is where the magic happens. Nice short throws, crisp engagement, such a better manual transmission than what's in the BMW M4. The one the M4 feels like a rubber band. This is nice and solid and beefy. Love the way they did the stitching. Two cup holders, we have our drift e-brake. So it's an electric e-brake, but you can actually drift with it, believe it or not. And then of course, you got your standard Mustang key fob, all the buttons on the back. Soft touch material, open this up. You have another 12 volt and you have enough room in there. I would say you could probably get eight honey buns in there. Not the best for you, but if you need a caloric intake, it's an easy way to get a ton of calories down into your belly. Seats, the blue leather, the stitching, the Alcantara, not a lot of bolstering, but you can get Recaro's. The thing that I hate that I have to zonk is manual back, but you do have electric bottom portion and you do have a rear seat like the BMW. Actually, the way the BMW M4 is styled, like the way they do the actual design of the body, you actually have a little bit more room for your passengers back there than you do in this Mustang. But why don't you come over to the business end? I wanna show you behind the new wheel in this new dark horse. All right guys, business time behind the wheel. You do have three memory seat settings, but it's only for the bottom portion, which to me is idiotic, but that's just me. Mustang dark horse, love the sill plate. Obviously that triple pedal action, aluminum clutch, brake pedal and throttle. You could do your own heel toe downshifting, which is very easy to do, or it's got the automatic red match downshift. You got your little plastic dead pedal, which I have to zonk. I wish it was aluminum like the rest of them. There's your seat controls only for the bottom. Thank God it's got lower lumbar. I need that to keep myself out of the chiropractor office. I'm six feet tall, plenty of room in here, actually more room than in the BMW M4. Steering wheel, love the way they styled it. Alcantara, leather, flat bottom, flat black on all the switch gear. It is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then you have that 12.3 inch digital display, which remember, you could change up those gauges 20 different ways from Sunday. Check it out, watch this. I'm gonna go into my Mustang, and then I could go Sport, which actually looks like the BMW M4 gauges. Normal, that's kind of boring, who the hell wants that? One thing your BMW is not gonna do is Fox body gauges, baby. Love the way they had that set up. No head up display, but the screen is so large, you really don't need a head up display. But let's go ahead. You could use this as a daily driver, just like an M4. Let's go ahead and check out the trunk space and see how it compares.
All right, guys, time to get into the trunk. Hit the button underneath, lift it up, and this is what makes the Mustang so usable is you have so much space in here. 15 cubic feet of cargo capacity. Like how low the cargo floor is, you can see the subwoofer from our sound system. The seats do 50-50 fold down, and no, there is not a spare. You get a can of flat fix and an electric air compressor, but you get the same thing on the BMW, and that's a car that's about $90,000. But why don't we go ahead, let's put the money where our mouths are, let's go on throttle and take a little spin in this dark horse. All right guys, we are inside this dark horse, brand new performance Mustang. If you're ready, I'm ready. Oh, throttle, here we go. The sound of that V8, baby. the engine revs it really does a great job when it comes to bringing air in through those dual throttle bodies and then of course revving it out to 7500 rpm what you're gonna find with the new Mustang Dark Horse is that they really made it more tuned for the track than the existing the pre-existing Mach 1 the previous gen Mach 1 you're still going to get all those essential coolers which is important to keep all the temps in check when you're doing your track days or driving your favorite twisty roads but they've just elevated the experience by putting work into the chassis they quickened up the steering quickened up uh, the overall transitioning of the weight of the vehicle from left to right and right to left and then of course you're looking at the brakes the massive brembo brakes on this now when you're comparing it to an m4 it's interesting because the m4 has definitely also gained some weight over the years what i find is is of course you're gonna have more grunt more torque down low than on that straight six twin turbocharged engine and it really pulls all the way through Redline very nicely. I, I understand the magazines now a little bit more. It's not so much that this is an M4, it's about the driving experience. And you know, for years, BMW was all about that ultimate driving machine. Well, I think a lot of that DNA is in this Mustang Dark Horse getting to everything is well within reach and that's important because like I said accessing anything on the infotainment system you got to go through the touchscreen uh, the air conditioning controls are a little cumbersome same thing with the heated and ventilated seats once you get the hang of it, it's a little bit better but still I just wish that they had some physical buttons for that I like how short the shift lever is that to me is really really nice especially compared to the shifter in the m4 the tremec is almost like on a totally different level than the manual gearbox in the bmw m4 the bmw m4 it's nice it's just too rubbery the the, the throws are longer than the tremec the engagement is not as crisp, and overall shifter action just does not compare to what this gearbox is all about. Clutch, not heavy at all. It's got a good pickup point, um, and I think that the BMW and the Dark Horse are both on that same even, even playing field, level playing field, when it comes to the actual clutch pedal. Even though I despise these massive screens, it is easy to see everything, especially when you're in track mode. You got the tack across the top, nice large gear indicator, and of course the shift knob just fits perfectly in the palm of your hand. You're gonna have more room in here than the M4, and definitely the materials have been elevated, but they're not, of course, at a BMW level. But remember, you're looking at about 
I don't know, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars more than this Mustang Dark Horse, and you can go higher with a nice handling package as well, which I would recommend. That's how I would spec mine. But visibility out the windshield's great, and uh, if you're ready, I'm ready. We got some twisty bits that we have a appointment with that we need to uh, need to work our way through. Sound of that V8, nothing fake. On throttle, here we go, yeah! Nice. Nice and balanced. In third gear. Crisp downshifts. how flexible the engine is on the revs. Yeah! I tell you, yeah, she weighs almost 4,000 pounds, but she likes to dance. It, the thing is, is that you just are able to get that torque so down low in the rev range that it puts the M4 torque level to shame. And I mean, that just makes sense. We got a five liter V8 instead of a three liter twin turbo straight six. Guys, I wanna do a slow roll. We're turning about 2,500 RPM second gear. If you're ready, I'm freaking ready. Remember, we're in track mode. On oh, throttle, here we go. Pull, pull, pull. those brakes here we go the front end has good turning let's see how we do in this decreasing radius corner coming up here <laughs> wow I tell you the way that the front of the car communicates with the rear of the car much more balanced than the Mach 1 was and the way that at any time I could take a glance and look at the tack to see where I am in the rev range uh, the gear indicator it, it's it's very spot on the money plus the auxiliary gauges and I think that's what I I really like about the interior over the M4 is just the instrumentation is so much more clear. The graphics are so crisp and uh, it just makes a pleasure out of getting information with this vehicle. Looking out over that massive hood, seeing our stripe kit with the dark horse name, you just feel like a badass in this thing. I really, you really do. The pops, the bangs, slowly rolling on. <laughs> if you don't smile driving this car, there is something definitely wrong with you. And if you're telling me you'd rather have an EV, go have it. You can have two EVs. I'll go with this, uh, this Mustang Dark Horse for sure. But visibility's good. You got the rear seats. Like I said, I think they should offer a rear seat delete on this thing. But I guess that puts it on a level playing field with uh, with the M4. All right, guys, here we go. I'm gonna slow her down. We're in third gear. Down to second. 4,500 RPM. On throw, here we go. <laughs> yeah. On those brakes. You have so much grip coming out of a corner. Unbelievable. And then you just float that revs really, really nice here. Look at this. On those brakes. It really does a great job too with all of the 
uh, indentations in the road. It doesn't upset the chassis, which is wonderful. And that's something that is so great to see because if it allowed the vibration to mess up the chassis, it would just destroy the handling of this vehicle because you're not dealing with that. It makes it so stable. All right, guys, one more time for me. Definitely one more time for you. Let me drop it down to first, of course. On throttle, here we go. Chirping second, baby. Nice, look how balanced she is. Look how balanced. Right, right to left. Mm, yeah! I almost grabbed fourth. Almost. <laughs> I tell you, this is the type of car that just makes you feel good and you get to daily drive it. Every single day, you got a usable trunk, sort of usable back seat, new technology. And like I said, comparing it to the M4, a way lower price. But we need to get back to where it all started and wrap this one up so I will see you in a Mustang minute. All right, guys. <laughs> it's been one of those days where, man, oh, man, I love VA powered cars, especially when they're equipped with manuals. We got to thank everybody at Ford for getting us access to this brand new 2024 Mustang Dark Horse. Let me know what you think. Are you going to go with that V8, either the 10 speed automatic or the six speed manual in this Dark Horse, or are you going to go German style with the BMW M4 and you could have a six speed or a ZF8 speed? Let me know down in that comment section which way you're spending your performance dollars. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radius Rise family. Of course, we need to give it up to the flood man. He is bringing his extra hard work today because guess what? We have now have been filming for 10 hours straight. So thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next road.